Hey there. Whoop, up here. I know, I'm tall, probably should be playing basketball. The thing is, I've got an even cooler job. I'm a marine biologist. Come on in. This office doesn't look that cool, but I get to spend a lot of my time out in the field. In fact, I just got back from three months in Hawaii and the Southern Caribbean, and now that I'm back home, I'm doing a lot of work with local kids. Also, to keep up with the amazing creatures that I study, coral, I'm volunteering at our local aquarium, and I'd love to show you just how cool these critters are. So let's go check it out. While coral might seem quite simple, in fact, they're not. And to give you a sense of that, while they are, of course, an animal, like this seal here, they're also part plant and part rock. This here is the bird's nest coral. The red that we're seeing on the outside is the animal tissue. And being a colonial organism, there are hundreds to thousands to millions of individual animals all stuck together by their skeleton. And each one of these little animals has a mouth so it can eat. But that's not the main way that these animals get food. They actually have microscopic plants that live in their tissue, which is part of the reason that the tissue is red. Now, these microscopic plants use the sun to make sugar, just like most other plants do, and then the coral actually takes this energy from them without killing them, much like milking a cow. So, the plants get protection and the coral gets food. And now, if we were to break off a branch of this coral, we would expose the inner skeleton, which is the rock portion that I was referring to. When many coral grow next to one another, they can build massive reefs. And some of these corals can get huge over hundreds of years. They can get to be as big as a bus or even a house. And when you get lots and lots of corals growing on top of each other, you can even build islands. Sometimes you won't even know that you're on an island made of coral until you go and look at a cliff and you can actually see the coral skeleton. Well, I hope I've convinced you today just how cool coral are and given you a sense of how fun it can be to study them. But what I didn't mention is that coral are declining worldwide, and this is largely the result of human activities on land. In fact, that's exactly what I study, how human activities on land are leading to the decline of ecosystems in the ocean. And my interest in this dates back a really long time to when I was a kid, and I watched as the lake that I spent my summers on with my family progressively went downhill because of the amount of pollution that ran into it from all the human activities on land surrounding it. I noticed even then that humans really need to clean up our act if we want to preserve our natural ecosystems. Well, all this work isn't quite so glamorous, so for me, I should probably get back to work and crunch some data.